Hello, everybody. Hello. Uh, happy Thursday. Y'all, it's so great to see you. Thanks, everybody, for uh, joining me today live as we do block number 10 of the mittens. Y'all, we're doing raw edge applique today, and I'm going to bring you along as I make my block. It's so great to see y'all. Uh, always have to restart the chat to make sure it's going. There we go. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, Wanda. That is so exciting. Wanda just uh, said that she won an Accu, Accu Cutter. Oh, my. I was so excited when you sent me a message and you told me. That is awesome. Hello, everybody. I want to uh, first start out today by saying a huge thank you to my moderators. Y'all, I just don't want to go live without you guys. Thank y'all so much for volunteering your time keeping an eye on the chat so uh, we can focus on the good stuff and make these projects together. Thank you so, so much. Hello, everybody. Thank you. This is one of my favorite shirts, this pink shirt. I <laughs> It's about six years old. In some parts, it's been washed so many times. I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to wear it too much longer. There's a couple holes down near the bottom. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Y'all, we are approaching the end of this quilt along, or the end of the blocks anyways, right? After today, we have two more blocks to do. I thought we would do a show and tell tomorrow. For those of you who want to share your newest progress on this quilt, and I'll put a link on Creative Crew up at the top tomorrow morning. And we'll do a little show and tell at the end of tomorrow's video. And for those of you who are on Creative Crew, I believe Vicki said she's going to host a Zoom this evening, 7.30ish Eastern Standard Time. So keep an eye out for that. Yeah, this shirt is broke in. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Raw edge applique. Y'all, we've done a couple blocks using the same techniques today. Um, I have a couple different threads picked out and I want to show you the pattern for these mittens before we begin. Yeah, I might have to patch up this shirt. <laughs> Patricia, I do. I have about 25, maybe 30. I was looking at my closet, maybe 30 t-shirts, but you usually see me wear the same like seven or eight ones. Those, the ones you see me wearing are generally my favorite out of the ones that I have. All right, I'm going to switch you over to the cutting mat. We're going to take a look at uh, block number 11, the mittens. We're right here, y'all, and I've already cut my background square. It is 12 and a half by 12 and a half. And the applique pieces I've already cut today. I did not use my brother's scan and cut. These are pretty simple pieces, right? I was able just to trace them out myself and cut them out pretty quickly. I figured by the time I did that, uh, it might even take longer to send it over to the scan and cut. So today I just cut them out by hand. And we're going to flip over to one of the mittens and we're going to take a look at it. Here's one of the mittens. There's another one on the next page. Yesterday we were talking about this towards the end of yesterday's video and I was talking about all the little small pieces, the details within the mittens, right? These little details give some dimension to the applique and uh, really accent the, the mittens. But y'all look how little these pieces are. <laughs> and when I'm designing these on the screen, they look big because I've really zoomed in. But once you print them out, you're like, Lisa, what were you thinking? What were you thinking when you made those little pieces? So I think if you want to cut out these little pieces and applique them to your mitten, then by all means, I hope you have so much fun. But today I'm going to do mine a little bit different. And uh, I kind of like that I'm doing it different because it's going to give you some options as you approach this block, but also options and a mindset thinking that when you see any pattern out there, 
and you're intimidated by the method or how it looks, there's always ways to do it differently. And uh, Maria, if you want to buy the SVGs, uh, it's they're grouped together as a bundle for $5. There's a link in the description box. Uh, but most of these are pretty simple to cut out. I wouldn't want to cut out all those pieces by hand, but they're in the SVGs if you want to do that. <laughs> but I'm really hoping that by doing this a different way today, that it inspires you and makes you look at patterns a little bit differently, especially when it comes to applique. And, uh, and to just keep in the back of your mind, there's always more than one way to do it, right? Valeria, that's okay. I would rather you go talk to your husband. You can always see me anytime you want. Go talk to him. All right, and one other thing that I wanted to, to show you, a little tip that I like to do, and uh, it's more so when you're tracing these templates by hand, you, you really have an option to do this. But I wanted to show you, because we're layering the bottom of the mitten, over top of, you know, that's a little cuff, over top of the big part of the mitten. I want to show you what I did when I traced out this pattern. Here's my mitten. And there's the line where it's going to overlap, right? I extended the mitten fabric a little bit up below that line so that it tucks really nicely right underneath of that cuff. And, uh, by layering it, I'm not losing any of that cuff, right? So I just extended it just ever so slightly below that line. And it just makes layering that applique super easy. So that's one of the things I like to do, especially if I'm tracing and cutting out applique by hand. I kind of look to see where are the pieces going to layer. And I give myself a little bit of extra. I'm going to start heating up my iron and getting her ready. Today, uh, I might be doing a satin stitch. And so uh, I do have some medium weight tearaway stabilizer ready. And then I have a chalk pencil. I believe this is a Fiskars. Y'all can find these at your quilt shops, at Joanne Fabrics, Hobby Lobby, places like that. And uh, I might also use these iBody heat erasing pens. Um, we'll see how they show up on the fabric. And I have my background square. Um, let's move that off to the side for a second. Because the first thing I want to do is go ahead and layer this applique. You could do it right on your piece if you wanted to. But because I got this handy dandy silicone mat, we're using that today. <laughs> Wondering about the scan and cuts, how they work and pricing. The scan and cut machines. I have the CM350, which is actually discontinued. They don't make it anymore. But every once in a while, you find someone who's selling theirs because they're getting an, a newer machine or something like that. Or maybe they just don't use their cutting machine, so they're selling it. The newer ones coming out are uh, quite a bit pricier than when I bought mine. But if you're someone who uh, spends a lot of time in your craft room and you love doing raw edge applique, plus you make cards and you like to make shirts and all kinds of stuff, cutting machines in general are an awesome addition to your creative space. Kim, I like to use Pellon P44F for my t-shirt quilts. That is my go-to interfacing. Hazel, you're at the hotel. Oh, I hope you enjoy your journey. Safe travels, my friends. All right, so we have now made that one unit. See how I've overlapped 
and layered that. The cuff is right over that extra bit of mitten that I drew in there. Yeah, these silicone mats are so handy. The, uh, the fusible just peels right on off of there. And plus, it grips your fabric so it's not going to move around while you're layering your pieces. That's nice. Ooh, Dari just got a whole bunch of heat and bond light. I have a bolt of it, Dari, that has lasted me. Let's see. I've had that two and a half years. I don't know that I'm halfway through it. It is lasting me forever. <laughs> and I do a lot. I do a lot of free motion quilting using it. All right, so our mittens are now one piece. We're going to bring in that background fabric. I thought this blue was pretty. And the funny thing is looking at my computer screen, it looks a little bit different on the screen than it does in person. I think that's pretty typical, though. And now we're going to bring in these mittens. And y'all just get fun with the placement. Keep in mind, if you want to add it, there is the little, uh, the little piece that connects the mittens together. If you want to add that... That's what that is. <laughs> it goes right in between the two mittens. So if you want to add that, remember to keep the spacing for it. Allow for that spacing at the bottom of your block. Because you don't want to put that right on the edge. Because you might end up cutting it off when you join these to your sashings. That looks really good. I'm going to go ahead and fuse that into place. Yeah, the thread painting workshop. That was so much fun. Dixie Doodles, I'm so glad you said that. She said, love those fabrics. I meant to show you the, uh, the salvage edge of the blue fabric because I, I just opened up this fat quarter this morning and we haven't used this yet. And I'll read that off in case you want to look for it. Just make sure those pieces are... Good and fuse down and we'll let that cool off. Hazel said, or you could couch on that swirl. Yes, ma'am. You oh you could. Why did I not think of that? Y'all know I love couching <laughs> with yarn. This blue fabric is called vintage shirting and dress prints. Ooh, that's so cool. Uh 1880 to 1910 by Barbara. Uh Eek meter? I'm sorry, I know I just messed up your name. For Paintbrush Studio, 100% reproduced in, and then it was cut off. <laughs> Sylvia, we did a thread painting workshop last night over on Patreon. I'm um, trying to think if I have any videos where I did thread painting. Uh, if you look on my channel, I guess this could be considered red painting I did a little turtle art quilt a little sea turtle and I used ink tense paints to paint the sea turtle but in that video I thread painted the turtle and uh and I did some couching in the water so check out that video uh I know I did it in that video That's cooling off. We're going to take a look at some threads that I pulled on. And this is polyester thread. It's got the same matte finish that I've been using all along. Uh, these two are from AK Trading Company. And this is YLI, UU, Universal Thread. 
They are polyesters and, and I couldn't quite decide on a color. So we're just going to set those right there. I know that I want to go ahead and add that little swirl in there, so I'm just going to hand draw mine with a heat erasing pen. And I'm just going to look at it and eyeball it. <laughs> Hopefully y'all can see that show up. It does a little loop-de-loop. -loop. And comes over to the bottom of the next one. Can y'all see that? A little bit. And then I am going to add some details to this mitten. And for that, I'm going to just use this little chalk pencil so that it shows up on this darker fabric really well. And uh, again, I'm just eyeballing these little lines in here. You could do all of them. You could do some of them. There we go. And we'll do not all of these dots. We're just going to do a couple of them. <laughs> And we'll do the same thing over here on this one. Just adding some details to that mitten. Like that. I think that will be super cute. Ooh, Dari just shared the link to the turtle video. Thank you, Dari. All right, so let's think of how we're going to approach the raw edge applique. What I'm going to do first, though, is secure the raw edges around my mitten and the cuffs. So we're going to sew that down. Y'all, there are so many different stitches you could do. To sew these edges down. I think I will use a blanket stitch today. Now it's just trying to figure out which color I want to use. And uh, I'm kind of really gravitating towards this one. But when we get down to the little swirly part, I think I'm going to change my top thread and use this burgundy color, even though it's not exactly the same color red. There's some separation between those pieces, and so I don't know that that will matter so much. If I stitch this color thread on this, I think you would see the difference. But with that little separation, I think we'll be good. And then I picked this lighter fabric to come in and probably do a satin stitch where we just drew those little marks. So that's my plan of approach. Let me get this thread in my machine, which is just going to take a second. We don't have to set any seam allowances today. <laughs> and I have my open toe foot on so that hopefully you can see what I'm doing pretty well. And because the blanket stitch is not a very dense stitch, we don't have to start off with a stabilizer underneath of this block. But if we switch over to a satin stitch, that is when I will add the stabilizer. Okay. All right, y'all. I think we're ready to go ahead and move over to the sewing machine. Just keep in mind, uh, while I'm over here, my phone's over here, <laughs> so I don't see a lot of the comments. So just keep that in mind while we're sewing. Okie doke. There's really no right or wrong place to start uh, with the blanket stitch. But what I would like to do is maybe do it in one continuous line without stopping. So I'm going to start right here. We will go down and around 
and come back to where we started and then go around the mitten. And we won't have to break thread, not one time. Let me get uh, this blanket stitch set up. Let me test this and then I'll tell you what my settings are in case you want to try to replicate it. Would help if I put my feed dogs back up. And I do see little pops of color from the light bobbin thread. So I'm going to lower my tension. And it's still popping up through. Not quite as much now. And she is as low as she will go. There we go. All right. I don't know why this is so not bright. Usually it's so bright over here. I don't know if you can see that. But in the beginning, I have pops of white. See that light colored bobbin thread is coming through to the top. And yesterday someone was asking, why do you lower your top tension? Uh, this is exactly one of the reasons why. The top tension was tight and pulling that bobbin thread up to the top. But as I loosened it, it got less and less. And I will bring this over here so you can maybe see it better over there once we switch back. But test it out before you start sewing on your project. All right, we're ready to get started. And that bobbin thread is still popping up there. I'll cut this little tail where we started. I probably should have put a bobbin thread I don't know why y'all this is so dark today let me see if I can fix that so you can see a little bit better I probably should have put a darker bobbin thread in to use this uh, top thread is that better yeah that's a lot better but I didn't want to be switching out bobbins and top thread, but I uh, probably should have done that. All right, we're back right where we started, and now I'm just going to go around the mitten. I saw someone say, and I'm sorry, I forgot who exactly was saying it. Maybe it was Connie was saying she might do a whole quilt with the Christmas wreath block. I think that would be awesome. 
That would be adorable. In case this is your first time watching, y'all, this is a free quilt pattern. The link is in the description box. Even if you can't make it now, I hope you grab it and maybe put it in line with your projects. I'm also thinking it's probably time for me to change the needle and put a new one in. <laughs> this one sewing needle has uh, pieced a t-shirt quilt. It has sewn all of the blocks in this quilt so far, all of the sashing and cornerstones to this point. Uh, it did a thread painting workshop last night and it is making this block today. I think I've probably extended the normal life of this sewing needle beyond <laughs> its life expectancy. So I need to just sit down after today's video and change out that needle. All right, right there is where uh, we're going to meet up with the previous line we've already done. So I'm going to stop right at the base uh, of that cuff right there. Now I'm going to use my thread cutter. And if your machine doesn't have one, pull it away from the needle. Cut yourself some longer tails. Thread them to the back and tie that off in a knot in the back. And we're going to do the same exact thing on this cuff. So y'all bear with me. We're going to repeat the same thing. I'm going to trim off that little tail where we started. And I meant to tell you the stitch length for this stitch, I chose a 2.8 and the width is a 2.2.
We're about three quarters of the way done with this stitch. I really do wish I had a darker thread in my bobbin, but uh, I think this will lend good to show you what will happen if you use a light, a, con a really contrasting thread in the top and bottom, and your tension is still not exactly right. We shall use that as an example today. And we're coming to the base of this cuff. When we get here, we're going to be done with the blanket stitch. So there we go. Uh, I'm thinking maybe since I changed the brightness of the camera, you might be able to see little tiny pops of white ever so slightly in that mitten. That's my bobbin thread. And even though I've lowered my tension all the way as low as it'll go, uh, I still have little pops of white. You barely can see it. To be honest, I would not point this out to nobody in my quilt, uh, but because we're using this as a demo and I wanna teach you or aid you in your stitching, I'm pointing this out to you. But if this happens to you, don't show nobody. <laughs> That's the bobbin thread coming up to the top. And maybe since we changed the brightness, I still don't know that you're going to see it. See it right there? That's the bobbin thread coming through to the top. And it did get less and less as I lowered that top tension. All right, so that is the blanket stitch for this block. I'm gonna switch out to that uh, burgundy thread that I showed earlier. We're gonna bring that over. It's gonna take me a second to change out this thread. We're gonna switch over to a satin stitch next. And you know what? I wonder if I have a bobbin <laughs> that is dark. Let me see. Do I? Do I? Do I? I do not. You know what? Y'all give me a second. I'm going to thread this bobbin because I already know that bobbin thread wants to poke through the top and I don't want it to show up in my satin stitch. I can live with it in my blanket stitch. You can barely see it. But if I do a satin stitch with a really dark thread on top and this light thread in the bobbin, you're going to see that bobbin thread on the top. So let me just take the time. I should have thought about that before starting the video. <laughs> There's never enough time in the day, y'all. I'm just pulling the thread off of this bobbin. Sorry, it might be because of my needle, but in all honesty, whenever I do the satin stitch, I lower my top tension anyway. Uh, when I do the blanket stitch, depending on what thread I'm using, I usually lower the tension a little bit. The dollar needle might be causing that, but... Uh, You'll hear me say a lot that I usually wind a bobbin with the same thread I'm using in the top when I'm doing these stitches. 
I just didn't have time to do it today. I thought I would be okay, but nope. All right, let me get some thread on this bobbin. I don't even have to put the full, uh, the full amount of thread on this bobbin, just enough to get me through. And in the meantime, I can take a sip of water. Oh, my honey's here. Y'all say hi to Harlan. Y'all, he pulled his back out a couple days ago, so he has been in so much pain. And he's still been working every single day through it. And even working late at night. We've both been pulling some long hours here this past week. Y'all say hi to Harlan. Let me switch out this bobbin. And I think I'm going to be much happier with the results just taking the time to do that. And now we will rethread this machine. I have a thread cutter on this machine, but I have a love-hate relationship with it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Most of the time, it's just faster for me to thread the needle myself. <laughs> All right. So with this burgundy thread, uh, instead of cutting this as applique, like it shows in the pattern, I'm just going to do a satin stitch right through there. I am going to bring in some scraps and we're going to set this satin stitch before we begin. Satin stitch, you might have a programmed number on your machine or you might use the zigzag stitch lowered to a lower um, length, right? Oh, I think that's going to be nice. I think that's the perfect little width for the little connector between the mittens. And this was set at uh, 0.3 for the length and a 3.0 for the width. In case you want to start there with your settings. Now, y'all, this is a denser stitch. So I'm going to bring in two layers of a medium weight caraway stabilizer. There's two sheets here. I'm using the big sheet, so hopefully I can fit everything we're stitching and I don't have to patch it in there. All right, so we're gonna start right here on the base of this mitten and then stitch this out with a satin stitch. I'm going to back it up just a little bit. We're going to lock those beginning stitches in. And I started, there's a small little gap. Uh, I know you can't see it because the foot's in the way. I want to fill in that little gap. There we go. Pay attention to what side my needle is on when I'm rotating this fabric.
the beauty of this heat erasing pen is that if I sew off the line, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you can take the iron and erase that. No one will ever know that you didn't sew it exactly right on the line. And we're coming up to the next mitten. I'm going to go ahead and just do some back stitches to really lock that in. And then cut that thread. So there's our little connecting piece between the two mittens. And we're changing the thread one more time and I'm going to switch out this bobbin again to the lighter color. <laughs> Back and forth today. Back and forth. Back and forth. There it is. Because now we're going to be putting a lighter thread up top. And we're going to be doing the little accent pieces on the mitten. And I think... Thank you all for joining me today. I think this little texture is going to be really adorable. Of course, if you want to leave it completely off, I think your mittens would look just as cute without doing this part. All right, let's get this needle threaded for the last time today. Man, I'm so thankful I have bifocals. Now, I don't think that this stitch needs to be quite as dense as this. Uh, so I'm going to increase the length to a 0.5. That's going to give me probably a little bit of spacing between my zigzags back and forth. But I think for this part, I think that that's going to look pretty cute. And I'm just jumping from one to the next. We'll have all of these little jump stitches to cut at the end.
See how quick that part goes by? Adding just those couple little notches in your lengths really speeds up the amount of time it takes. Just do your lines. We're going to come down and just hit a couple little accent pieces. One more on this mitten, and we're going to jump over to the other one. <clears throat> See, isn't that cute? Let's jump right on over to this next one. I do think <laughs> this doing it this way is a lot easier for me versus cutting out little strips of applique. We have one long line left. Now we're going to jump, we're going to jump this way and do these little dots on this side. You could get real fancy and do all kinds of decorative stitches, y'all, for this part. And this is our last one. There we go. Doesn't that look really cute? And I did not have to sew down all of those little tiny applique pieces. I could have even gone in and, and e added even more of those. Uh, but I think that looks pretty darn cute. We're going to move this over and cut these jump stitches. Just know that I've missed a ton of chat while we were at the sewing machine. I'll have to go back and uh, read everything this evening. See all these little jump stitches? We're going to go ahead and just trim those off. And they're pretty long, so they're easy to cut. These smaller ones, that might be helpful, Lisa, to bring in some tweezers <laughs> and not struggle with it. There we go. 
So there's the first mitten. I will say with this satin stitch, I think this blue fabric, y'all, I got all my fabrics for this quilt from uh, the quilt shop up in Vermont. This is probably the thinnest one of all the fabrics I've used so far. And even with the two layers of interfacing or stabilizer, I got a little bit of puckering down here when I did this satin stitch. Probably because this fabric is a little bit thinner than the rest of the ones I've been working with. And I probably could have stood to starch this one before cutting this piece out. I'm going to trim. And just cut these stitches on the back before I start tearing this stuff off. Nita said, why not cut the threads after each row? You certainly could. You see how quick I just jumped around, though? Uh, I just jumped from one place to another because for me, it's much faster. You could certainly slow down and take your time and cut each one. But cutting the jump stitches, especially if you do machine embroidery, you know jump stitches. That machine moves from place to place. And uh, cutting jump stitches is just kind of part of the game. But you could certainly take your time and cut these stitches as you're jumping around. This is going to take you a little bit longer at the sewing machine. I'm going to tear this right off the back. There's some good chunks in there, so I might save some of that. Try not to throw away the big pieces. I'm just moving the majority of this. I'm not worried if some of this stays behind, especially within these pieces. I'm okay with that. I'm just getting the majority of it out. And then you take this and you scoot it off in the floor. <laughs> and let's take a look at our mittens. I do. I save the big chunks of tear away because you know me. I do, I do lots and lots of applique. And sometimes, most of the time, it's small stuff on mug rugs. And there's some good chunks of uh, stabilizer here, right? Y'all, money doesn't grow on trees. I'm saving all these big pieces. <laughs> I do the same thing with heat and bond light, too. I save. Now, at some point, I do have to draw a line because there's, you know, there's a fine line between being thrifty and smart and uh, being obsessive, right? Little tiny pieces like this or pieces that are torn, you know, at some point, I have to call it and say, that's going in the trash. But this, I'm saving that. <laughs> I am 
going to give this a quick press because I do have a little bit of little bit of wavering down here at the bottom. Sometimes you have to be careful pressing after you do a, a satin stitch like this because you might even cause it to wave even more. But this blue fabric is not really wanting to behave. That's much better. And you'll see I'm not really pressing on this. You could, but I'm just pressing those edges and trying not to stretch the fabric when I do it. There we go. That lays much flatter. Sometimes I'll even take like a towel and put it down and press on the towel and that gives some space for the satin stitch to go. But uh, that is much better. So there is our mittens. I really like these accents. I really like that. You know, in person, it does look a little bit different than on the screen. But uh, even on the screen, it really shows some sort of some dimension, kind of curving that mitten over a little bit. I really like that. Yeah, thank y'all so much. Thank you so much. And if you're still here hanging out with me, because that took a little bit of time at the sewing machine, Thank you so much. Let's just take a look at our block for tomorrow. Tomorrow. We are doing the rail fence. You're going to need three colors of fabric for tomorrow's block. We are sewing the strip sets with our pieces, right? You'll see 15 inches. And you might be like, well, we don't even have blocks that are that big. We're sewing strip sets which is a little bit harder for me because I struggle keeping straight on those long seams, but we're going to take it nice and slow tomorrow. We are doing the strip sets and then cutting them apart, and that should make this block go by pretty fast. And I say pretty simple, but if you're like me and you have a hard time going long straight lines, that might up the difficulty level a little bit, but the piecing is super easy with this block. So I don't think it's gonna take us forever to make this block. So a show and tell at the end of tomorrow's video would be lovely. And it gives everybody else a chance to see uh, your newest progress on the down home Christmas quilt. Yep, I like that a lot. Ooh, that's going to look so good up on the wall. Y'all can see I've made some progress behind us. Paula, yeah, go back to sleep. I thought you were going to go back to sleep at the very beginning. Wow, you stuck through with me. Oh, go get some sleep. So uh, I do have a few minutes. If we have questions that I missed, because it's a very good chance that y'all asked me questions while I was looking over here. Uh, so if y'all want to sit and chat for a minute, if you have questions, let me scoot this over. There we go. <laughs> Looked like we were doing video number one. Valeria, you're going to go to sleep too? Y'all have sweet dreams. Marla asked, uh, when you quilt it, do you go over the applique or around it? You could do either one, Marla. I think it's going to depend on the finished quilt look that you're going for. You could put an edge-to-edge -edge design. You could do that with your quilt, or you could take the time and uh, stitch around your applique. Let me switch it back. Stitch around your applique. Anchor that down, come in and do a background quilting design, 
And then you could even come in and, you know, quilt through here and separate those two pieces with some quilty dimension. You could even do some quilting within the larger mitten. So much stuff you could do. Or you could just do a holly pantograph. Some kind of Christmas themed pantograph on your quilt and do an edge to edge quilting it would look just as lovely. I think that's all going to depend on your finished desired look with your quilt and how much time you have. <laughs> Sherry said, work, work, work. Miss Sherry, I'm putting your third quilt on the frame this afternoon. Oh, yeah. Let me just tell you, that quilting design is something else. I love it. Susan said, I am still struggling with my zigzag for applique. It is still randomly dropping stitches. My old machine does not have any fancy stitches. Uh, it's dropping the stitches. You might want to change out the type of needle you're using. Uh, you might want to go in and you might have already cleaned that bobbin area and you think it's sparkly clean, but you might want to go back in and make sure you're not missing any tiny little speck of uh, lint or thread. You might want to experiment changing the tension of your thread up at the top of your machine. And if all else fails, try a totally different thread. Oh, Vicky's here. She said she will host a Zoom tonight. Yay. Sherry, that is so, uh, what a coincidence. It remind, reminds you of your bracelet that you wear. Wow. I knew we were like this. We, we often think a lot alike. <laughs> That's awesome, Vicki. I might pop in with y'all, but I might also call it an early night. Harlan and I both have been working really long hours, and his back is hurt. And even with that, he did not get home until 9 o'clock last night. So I might just take the evening off and hang out with him. But uh, if I'm not able to join in, I hope y'all have so much fun. Geraldine said, when you set your needle for special stitches, you always set it to the right. Uh, my, my machine, I won't say it's not brand new. I've had it a couple years, but relatively new in the sewing machine history in the world, right? Uh, so when I change stitches, the needle automatically moves to accommodate for that stitch. If you have an older machine, you might have to move the needle yourself to accommodate for the stitch that you're using. Sylvia said, you deserve an evening off. I'm going to tell you what, uh, I am almost cut. Well, I've said it a couple of days. You know, I've been about a week behind because, you know, we went to see uh, Harlan's mom and spend some time with her. And so, y'all, I've just been hustled like a freight train, just trying to stay above water, catch up with everything else. Uh, this is just a small part of what I do. This is just a small part of uh, who I am and uh, making videos and making content, stuff like that. Uh just trying to stay afloat with everything. But I see the light at the end of the tunnel. I am just about caught up. I'm not ahead of where I need to be, but I'm almost caught up with where I should be. And we've pulled some long days, uh, Saturdays and Sundays for the last couple weeks. And I'm just about there. And next week looks like super chill compared to the last two weeks. <laughs> I have stuff to do, but I'm like, that is nothing compared to what I've done the last two weeks. So next week, even though I'm working, it looks like a vacation. <laughs> but 
But yeah, tonight we might just chill out. Ah, oh, Wanda's going to a revival meeting at church tonight and tomorrow. Y'all are so welcome. You're welcome. What happened to Harlan? He, uh, well, he has a back injury, right? And um, so every once in a while, and all it takes is for him to turn wrong or to bend over wrong or to sleep funny and his back will go out. And uh, since we've been back from Gloucester, he's been helping my brother move uh, his furniture and all kinds of stuff. And I'm pretty sure he aggravated his back. And then two or three days ago, getting up out of the bed, that's all he did. And it went out. It was out. And he had to go to the ER. And they gave him medicine and patches for his back. It is getting better. But even with his back out, he's had to work. Because, uh, you know, deadlines and stuff like that. Important stuff at work. And uh, so he's just been dealing with it. But it is starting to get better. Patricia said, you might have jinxed it. More stuff will probably be coming at you now. Well, uh, I'm praying against that, Miss Patricia. But you're right. You know, sometimes when you say something out loud, you kind of mess up the plan. But I'm praying against it. <laughs> uh, Robin said, I do have a question unrelated to this quilt. <clears throat> but do you know if the... Biggs die cuts fit in any of the Gemini machines. Hmm. I'm not sure. Does anybody else know? Because maybe someone here knows. I have a big shot. Uh, so I use some Tim Holtz dies and some other different brands, but I don't have the Gemini. So I can't answer that question. Maybe someone else who has a Gemini here will be able to answer that for you, Robin. And you know what? Uh, Robin, come back in a couple days to this video and check the comment section. Because maybe someone watching on the replay has a Gemini and knows the answer to it. And will answer in the comment section of the video. Ah, thank you, Sherry. I'm thankful for all of y'all. Sherry, I was just looking at the note on the box as I was getting ready to open up your third box. It just makes me want to cry. Wow, Sheila. Oh, my goodness. Trinita, I will tell him. I will tell him you said thank you. All right, y'all, I am off to go to the post office and to load Sherry's quilt. And I have a client coming to pick up her t-shirt quilt. So I've got lots of stuff to do today after our live. I hope y'all have a fantastic day. Three colors of fabric. That's all you need for tomorrow's block. Should be relatively simple, especially compared to the wheels block we did yesterday. So uh, I look forward to seeing you. Today is Thursday, right? Tomorrow's Friday, y'all. Tomorrow's Friday. I think. I think I'm on the right day. <laughs> All right, everybody. See you tomorrow.